So a lot of people have been asking me about horn recording. Like, what mics do I use? How do I set them up? How do I get that sound? So I thought a little video would be interesting to explain all that. So the first thing you need to know is that recording French horn is a bit tricky compared to other instruments. The thing is, when you play the horn, the sound goes behind you. And that's very specific to the horn. I'm not even sure there's another instrument like that. So the listener doesn't hear his direct sound, like they would for, say, a trumpet or a trombone, since for these, their bell is directly facing the audience. For the horn, they will hear its reflected sound. So that means the sound will go behind the horn player and it's gonna bounce back and whatever is behind him and then into the room or the venue and eventually into the ears of the listeners. So you need to capture that sound when you record your instrument. And for that, I found that having two mics to record in stereo is extremely interesting. I've experimented a lot with mic placements and in the end, I came up with this setup. So there's one mic in front of me and another behind. And the key thing is that you do not want the mic behind you directly facing the bell. Otherwise you would catch too much direct sound which, if you remember, we don't want to capture in order to recreate that reflected ambient sound. So I use two mics. The one in front of me is a Sennheiser 421, and the one behind is a Shure SM27. I honestly can't say if these are the best for French horn. They might not be, but I just happen to have these two, and when I combined them, I was very happy with the sound I got. So in the end, I just kept it that way. And that's the sound you hear in uh, all of my covers. Another technique that I wanted to share with you is that when you're recording multiple horn parts, you can change positions. Like, if you want to do a full horn section, playing a unison, for example, it's always better to record each horn part differently, so you can either record them with different horns, but not everyone has several horns to play with, so another solution is to change your position so that you can somehow recreate a, a horn section, which as you know is made of different horn players with different horns, all sitting at a different angle from the mics. Then once you've recorded everything, the next step will be to apply effects to your tracks. Just to name a few, there's EQ, which enables you to cut or boost any frequency in your tracks. Another important one is reverb. You will also pan your tracks, which means you will spread them through the stereo sound field. For example, in the context of a symphonic piece, the horns will be on the left side, since that's where they are in the orchestra, and you will do it like this. But if you're recording a horn quartet, for example, it's going to be completely different. You will have to give each horn its own spot within the stereo field in order to recreate the way it would sound in real life. So in the end, all of this will help you polish your sound. There's many aspects to the sound that you can tweak with all of these tools in order to get the best sound out of your horn. And this will all be done with what is called a DAW, D-A-W. It stands for Digital Audio Workstation. Mine is Cubase and it's a professional DAW, so it's quite costly. If you're just starting and you don't have a lot of money, there are free options uh, such as Audacity. And another cool thing about the DAW is the click track. If you want your tracks to be perfectly synchronized, especially when you multi-track like I do, it's always better to record them with a click track. And the DAW has this option. You can program tempo maps like this with time signatures and tempo changes. And so you will of course need headphones to listen to that click while you're recording. Uh, 
Um, yeah, there's also a lot of great tutorials on YouTube about all of that stuff that I just mentioned, so you can easily get started. After all, that's how I started 10 years ago when I did the John Williams tribute video, which was my very first one. Back then, I honestly didn't know anything about music production. So it's, it's, it's all about doing some research and, and it's all about experimenting yourself, really. So about the mics, uh, unless you have a USB microphone, you will also need an audio interface to plug the microphones into. My mics use an XLR connector and I use this audio interface to plug them in. It's a UR242 by Steinberg, which is the same company that did Cubase. This interface is plugged with a USB to my computer and my mics are plugged into it with XLR cables. One last thing that you need to know is that certain mics, condenser mics to be precise, like my Shure SM27, they need what is called phantom power in order to work. This is what this little button here is for. When you press it, it sends 48 volts into the mics. Without it, a condenser mic would basically be useless. Once again, this is just for condenser mics, like my Shure SM27. On the other hand, my Sennheiser 421 is a dynamic mic, and those do not need additional power, they can just work on their own. So beware of this when you choose your microphone. And like I mentioned earlier, there's also USB microphones, which could be an interesting option if, for example, you don't have the budget to buy an audio interface. I've never used a USB mic myself, but I know of some people who do, and some of those mics seem really cool, like the Blue Yeti, for example. So I hope this was instructive, and uh, I wish you luck if you're about to try and record yourself. It may seem a little daunting at first, especially when you first open a software like Cubase, since there's so many options everywhere and you can easily get lost. But once you get the gist of it, it's honestly not that hard. Once again, when I started out 10 years ago, I had no idea of how to properly set up a mic. Um, I didn't even know how to do the most basic things like panning or EQing. And it's just by doing some research and experimenting that I finally figured it out. And I can tell you that to this day, I'm still learning new things all the time. <laughs> so yeah, don't feel discouraged by any of this. It can be hard work at the beginning, but it's really worth it in the end. <laughs>